Hey everybody, and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and today we're gonna ask the question, is summer bad for beer? Well, summer probably is the best time to drink beer, but is it the best time to make beer? And the answer is maybe. And we'll answer that question after you hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer, and stay tuned. Well, we all know we like a nice, cold, refreshing beer in the summertime. But the reality is brewing beer in the summertime can have its downfalls and mainly because it's warmer. And a lot of people, when they first get into the hobby of home brewing, don't necessarily have a way to regulate that temperature adequately or may not know that much about it and how it affects the, your beer. When I first started brewing, I was brewing extract kits and it had nothing to do with the extract of why some of my beers were turning out bad or turning out good. It really had to do with temperature and I really didn't understand that at first. In the wintertime, I would make a batch, it would turn out great. And in the summertime, I may make that same exact batch and all of a sudden it didn't turn out so great and I would get off flavors and I really wasn't sure why. And I found out is because I used to keep my fermenter in a basement um, and in a spare bedroom. And it would sit there and in the winter time, my temperature, ambient temperature in my house would be in the mid 60s or even lower as I left for work and my heater wasn't running all the time. And that was actually a, probably a great temperature to brew beers, especially ales that want to be in that kind of 65, 67 range anyway uh, for their yeast, right? To not per to kind of prevent off flavors. And in the summertime, it was quite the opposite, right? And so when we left for work, my temperature in my house would raise a little bit because my heat, my air conditioning wasn't uh, kicking on as often. And even if I did leave the air conditioning on, my ambient temperature of my house was probably at around 70 degrees, but the beer itself warms up during fermentation. And so the, the my beer inside of the fermenter could probably get to the upper 70s, maybe even into the 80s if left unchecked. And so that was a lot of the reason why some of my beers, especially lighter ales like this one, uh, turned out really, really terrible. And I wouldn't say, you know, drinkable even because some of the off flavors were so pronounced. And so um, I didn't realize why I was getting those and why some of my batches would turn out great. I thought my process was meticulous. It had to do with temperature. And little did I know that makes a huge difference in the quality of your beer at the end of the day. It really has to do with the yeasts that you use because you can use a Kvike yeast, which actually likes those hotter temperatures but ale and lager yeast need a specific temperature in order to hit that sweet spot where they're uh, you know, very, very active, but not producing any weird esters or off flavors. Lagers in particular need to be at a much, much lower temperature, and it's really hard to do that without temperature control, right? And so if you're wanting to get into a traditional lagering process, you're gonna need to get and stay consistently in the 50s, and it's hard to do that without a fermentation uh, control device. And so let's talk a little bit about what I use. I have a chest freezer that I solely use for fermentation. I call it my fermentation chamber. This is just a standard chest freezer and it's hooked up to an Inkbird temperature controller. And that Inkbird temperature controller hooked up to this chest freezer is going to regulate my beer temperature and keep it within two degrees of my target temperature of 67 degrees in most cases for ales, right? And so in my case right here, the one I have behind me, I'm actually doing a diacetyl rest. I'm raising it up to kind of mid uh, 70s. And so that's where I want it to be for this particular yeast. But in most cases, we're going to set that thing at about 67 degrees. And then I'm able to change that thing as it, uh, I want to uh, raise it up for a diacetyl rest to make sure we kind of help clean up the beer at the end of the uh, fermentation process or I want to cold crash it down where I'm bringing it down to kind of the mid 30s before I might package that beer or keg it right and so in this case I have a regular ink bird temperature control unit and I'm actually going to change to a Wi-Fi one the units are exactly the same except for this one will give me the ability to make those temperature changes while I'm not at home and the reason I wanted to go to that is because I was actually making a hazy IPA the other day and I was out of town. And if I wanted to actually see that that's finished and I wanted to raise that up, if I'm out of town, I have to wait until I get back to do that or have someone come in here and do it for me if I'm not here because I actually have to be at the unit in order to change any of those settings. 
Well, the Inkbird Wi-Fi allows me to do it through the app and we'll go through all of those settings. But first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take down this old one. I'm gonna hook up the new one and then we're gonna go through that step by step. When you open up the Inkbird, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have the device and there's gonna be three cords that are on the bottom of, each of the unit. You're gonna have one that plugs into the wall to power the device. You're gonna have another one that's a temperature probe that's going to go and connect to your fer uh, fermenter in some way. I actually attach it just to the side of my carboy. And on the third line, you're going to have two plugs, one for heating and one for cooling. The cooling, you're going to plug in your chest freezer or you can use a mini fridge, a dorm fridge, you can use a uh, old refrigerator. Um, I would suggest not buying something new. You can buy something on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or something like that for very, very cheap. Sometimes you can pick up a chest freezer or an old fridge for 30 or $50 or less and uh, that's going to work just fine just for fermenting beer. For the heating side of things, I actually use a lizard lamp. And so it's, this is just a regular lamp housing. I have a black ceramic bulb in here. This doesn't emit any light. All it does is emit heat. And so in my fermentation chamber, it's not gonna admit any light where light is bad for beer and you can get a kind of a skunky beer if it's uh, exposed to too much light. But I use this lizard lamp. It just heats up, provides a heat source. And what that's gonna do is when the ink bird tells the, the cooler to, or the chest freezer to cool down, it cools and then shuts off when it gets down to the right temperature. But it may uh, you know keep cooling a little bit since the walls of the uh, chest freezer are, are still cold from cooling down a little bit. And what this is gonna do, if it gets two degrees below my target temperature, it's gonna tell this thing to kick on again, and then this will get warm and heat that whole interior back up and keep it again within that two degrees. So the chest freezer and this lizard lamp are going to be helping each other out by reg or helping the beer out by regulating that temperature back and forth a little bit. And so I would suggest using one of these. I'm gonna have all of these things in the link description. You can go check them out, the exact items that I use in my fermentation chamber. All right, we got everything set up. I've got my lizard lamp plugged in. Make sure you turn the switch off because it's gonna start heating right away as mine did. Um, I have my temperature probe, which I'm gonna hook up. And then I have my refrigerator, or my chest freezer also plugged into it as well on the cold side. And so in this case, we're going to open up my chest freezer. I slide this temperature probe right through the middle here. And so um, that will that's how that gets in here and it uh, closes and doesn't uh, have much of a seal problem. And then I put my, uh, because I have the switch, I have to put this off to the side of my fermentation chamber. And I leave that switch inside of the freezer. And then what I do is I just kind of place this facing away from the beer on the little compressor shelf that's in the bottom of the fridge. All right, so let's go through a couple of the settings as if you didn't have the Wi-Fi version. These are the same, whether you have the Wi-Fi version or the other one that I just took off, which does not have the Wi-Fi. So first you're gonna see your reading here. That is the reading that the actual probe is reading right now. That's the temperature it's reading. And we just put that on there. So of course that's gonna read a little high for now until it cools down in here. Um, and it's already starting to do that as you can see. The second number here is the number that you want the heat to, or the, the setting to be. And so in this case, um, we don't want it at 77. I'm actually shooting for about 73 right now. I'm, I'm raising this for a diacetyl rest. And so I'm gonna hold that button. The first uh, option we get to in our settings when it's blinking is for the temperature set value, okay? And so this is the temperature you want it to be. So I'm gonna turn that down to 73 and then uh, that will blink. You can press and hold if that's the only change you wanna make and it'll go back to that original setting. We're gonna go through some other settings. So go to the, if you push down again, or excuse me, if you push set again, it will go to HD and HD stands for heat differential. And so this is the, uh, what, you know, when, how far of a temperature range do you wanna have high or low before your heating and cooling kicks back on? I generally set this to two. Okay, and so it'll, every two degrees fluctuation from that 70 uh, or 67 degrees, so 69 or 65, and it will heat or cool depending on uh, that temperature. And so we're gonna put that at two. Um, you can set that for whatever you want. The next one, when you press your set button, 
is CD. And CD stands for cool difference. So same, uh, same thing. And so this one will be uh, also at two degrees. I'm gonna press again, the AH is an alarm for high temperature. And so it'll set an alarm if, it, if your thing gets too high. And so this is kind of nice in the fact that if you ever get over like 80 degrees and you think your beer is gonna be ruined, you can set this for 80. I wouldn't set it too crazy close to your fermentation temperature because this will go on and, or off until you shut it off, right? So it'll keep, keep blaring until you shut it off. And so um, you may have this go off right as you put this thing in here, uh, cooling down still before you pitch your yeast and that's fine. Uh, but it will beep. So I usually set that at about 80 degrees. That way if my something happens with this chest freezer and it starts getting really high, this will alarm and let me know. You can always just set that really high so it never goes off too because chances are it won't go to boiling. And then the lower temperature, again, I set this one um, pretty low because I do cold crash and I do use this freezer sometimes as a uh, regular freezer. So what I'll do is I'll set this thing at about five degrees or zero. And I'm using this in, in Fahrenheit as well. So these are Fahrenheit, uh, but you can also set it uh, for, um, for Celsius. And that's one of the settings we'll get to in a minute. So the next one is the uh, compressor delay time. Um, I just leave that at zero. And then this is your uh, temperature unit. And so whether you want it to be Celsius or Fahrenheit, and I want it to be on Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna check that. So now when I'm done with all my settings, I'm gonna go ahead and press set. And then that's gonna bring it back to this page. As you can tell, the green light kicked on because my temperature that, my, that I'm shooting for is actually um, higher or lower than my actual temperature inside of there since we had this opened up. So therefore the cooling element's gonna be turning on. If it gets below this by two degrees, my red light here will turn on and that means the uh, lizard lamp is going to kick on and warm that back up. So this time I'm gonna open this back up and turn back on my lizard lamp. So when that happens, it's ready to go. And that's all you would need to do if you didn't use the Wi-Fi one. So now we're gonna go through some of the Wi-Fi settings and how to use it on the app. Okay, so the first thing what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna open up the app and it looks like this one here at the bottom right. And you're gonna go ahead and click this open. You're gonna wanna set up an account and I've already done that. So you'll wanna sign in with your uh, email and uh, create a password. And so you can go ahead and set that up. And then it says no device has been added yet. We're gonna go ahead and click the plus button at the top. And we're gonna choose which one that we have. And so in this case, we have our uh, 308 Wi-Fi in the top left corner here. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And then it says the confirm that the indicator is rapidly blinking. It is doing that. And then we set, select our location settings. We're all using that, that's fine. And then you need to go ahead and put in your uh, Wi-Fi information. And then once you put in your Wi-Fi information, it will start connecting to your um, Inkbird. You might notice that the light on your Inkbird has stopped flashing rapidly. All right, and then we got a successful device added. And now we can go on and do our settings in here. And so as you can tell, it's gonna tell us right away on this page what our heat, uh, heating is or heating element saying it's reading right at this moment. And so right now uh, the beer is sitting at 71.6 degrees. And then I can change my settings by clicking settings and do all of the different settings that I was able to do um, when I was manually at the unit right here. And so I can set my heating uh, difference value of two, cooling difference value of two, uh, what my alarms will be when they go on my high temperature or low temperature, my refrigeration delay, whether there's a, for my condenser unit, want to put a delay, I have that at zero, um, temperature calibration, and then my Fahrenheit or Celsius. So I can change those there. And then if you kick the lower portion here, um, you can actually set your value uh, right here. And so right now I have it set for 73 degrees. Um, you can see that at the bottom of the page here and then the actual temperature is in the middle. So you don't click the middle part where the big circle is, you click the actual temperature uh, set value at the bottom where the little thermometer is here on the screen. All right, real quickly, let's talk about if you don't have a fermentation chamber or you don't have room to put one in, or you just haven't done it yet, but you still wanna make some good beers. 
One option is using Kvike Yeast. So Kvike Yeast is a little unique in the fact that it can really withstand higher temperatures. And so it actually wants to be in a lot of cases up in the upper 80s, 90 degrees, sometimes in the hundreds even, and it will not affect the flavor of your beer. In fact, a lot of Kvike strains actually give off some esters that are desirable at those levels. And so you actually make better beer, the warmer it gets. And so I did a whole video on the Kvike yeast. You can check that out. I'll have that linked in the description below, but I've actually had a friend use this and they said they kind of got a stuck fermentation and he put it in a bathtub full of really hot water, as hot as it would run, set the fermenter in there to warm it up. It got up into the nineties and that thing took off like a champ again. And so again, Kvike yeast will not get those off flavors from those hotter temperatures. So if that is your only way of brewing right now, where you don't have temperature control, I would suggest using Kvike yeast. All right, and that's how simple it is. That's how you can ensure that your beers over the summer months, even when it gets really hot and no matter where you have your beer fermenting, that you can use this temperature control system like a fermentation chamber and using that Inkbird uh, temperature control unit in order to make sure your beer has the best chance of not having any off flavors or um, ill effects from being too hot or too cold during fermentation. And so if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, helps out the channel a lot. Happy brewing and cheers. Thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. And another couple ways that you can help support the channel is by hitting that like and subscribe button. You can also check out the merchandise in our store. I have other shirts. We got glassware, we got stickers, hats, sweatshirts, etc. Go check it out. Also, hit that video here. You know you want to.